I'm out of the southern region, and as Karen said, even though we're now headquarters employees, we still work out of our respective regions. Atlanta is the regional office for the southern region, and it consists of these eight southeastern states uh, plus Puerto Rico. And we have roughly 500,000 miles of both gas and hazardous liquid pipelines in the southern region. Now, we're seeing a lot of projects because of all the fracking going on in western Pennsylvania up in North Dakota and all the gas that we're producing, uh, we're seeing a lot of flow reversal projects. Historically, your gases and your liquids went from south to north, or we're seeing a lot of projects that are transporting from north to south. And I want to talk about this project in particular because of the cats. We're getting a lot of inquiries about this particular project. And this is around an 850-mile pipeline that they not only want to reverse the flow, actually there's five pipelines, they're parallel pipelines, they all transport natural gas, and they want to take one, possibly two of these pipelines, and unfortunately they're taking the oldest pipelines, 1940s vintage, they're reversing the flow, and they're also going to be converting from a gas to a natural gas liquid, going from gas to liquid. And from an environmental standpoint, there's maybe higher potential risk if you have a release from a liquid pipeline that can do a lot more damage environmentally than uh, a gas pipeline. And a lot of the inquiries we're getting, they're very concerned because now it's going to be a liquid pipeline. And anyway, the pipeline goes from Ohio to Louisiana, and they're going to extend uh, that line into Texas. I want to talk about a particular group of people, a community in a rural area of Tennessee, and they sent a letter, and it was sort of unique because not only did they send a letter to the secretary of the DOT, but they also included a report in that letter. And they spent a lot of time on this report. It was a very detailed report. They had multiple photographs of areas where the pipeline was exposed, where it crossed streams. They had information on the pipeline operator. Uh, they knew the operator's history, and they also had information about PHMSA, and they knew there was a regulatory agency involved in pipeline safety. And that letter eventually made its way to the southern region. I responded. The response went up to, to our headquarters and went out under the associate administrator for the Office of Pipeline Safety. Unfortunately, the letter was fairly generic. It had a lot of good information in it, what we do in general, but we really didn't do that good a job addressing their specifics because they spent a lot of time putting this report together. So they came back and, and they weren't very happy with our response. They wanted more information. So I suggested, why don't we come up and maybe spend a couple days, meet with the folks in that community, discuss their concerns, and actually go through the woods and look at some of these areas where the pipelines are exposed and, and maybe provide them with some helpful information. And that's what we did. I got one of the inspectors from the southern region and myself, and we spent two days uh, speaking with the people in the community. We took photographs of some of these areas that we visited. And we told them that we're not doing an inspection because to do an inspection, we have to look at operator records. We're just going to listen to their concerns and provide them with information. And this is sort of an up close to the area. It's, we went through multiple towns, and I don't remember the names of any of the towns, some small towns, but it was generally 10 to 20 miles north-northwest of Nashville, a, a very rural area. And these are some of the photographs we took of the exposed pipelines. And one thing I suggested to them when they take photographs in the future, it's a good idea to have a reference point such as a ruler, or in this case, we had them put a quarter next to this indentation in the pipe, and it may be difficult to see. It's just to the right of that quarter. There's a small indentation, and now we know about the size of the indentation, that it's smaller than a quarter. And one thing that was interesting when we were doing this inspection, I'm looking at the inspector and saying, you know, these pipelines were put in during World War II in the 1940s, and these pipes look like they're in excellent condition. And the guy who's showing us around is looking at the same pipes and thinks they're ready to rupture at any minute. And that's something that we do is try to educate them. There's a lot going on that the operators do operational and maintenance-wise that the public doesn't necessarily uh, know about. 
And here's another area where there's exposed pipeline. They were concerned that there may be erosion issues and the span may be uh, uh, too long. Here you can see the black is the coating on the pipe. And again, these are 1940s pipe and there is peeling in areas of the coating. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a big issue as long as that pipeline is adequately uh, protected and has adequate cathodic protection. Here is an area where there was some debris on the pipeline that they were concerned about. Uh, here's a, a creek crossing and you can see the support on the pipe. And the pipe looks like it's in really good condition looking at this photograph. And right there is the cat's manager, just snuck into that picture. <laughs> and the, the community was really happy. They were very friendly people. And I never got the sense that they were against pipelines or didn't want to see pipelines in their community, but they were sincerely concerned because it's really a very pristine area. They do hunting there and fishing, and they just wanted to make sure that that pipeline was going to be operated and maintained safely. And these are some quotes that we got from the community expressing how happy they were that we actually took the time to spend a couple days with them, to speak with them, and to hear their concerns. And what we did, we put together a report. We have multiple photographs. I think we took around 25 or 30 photographs. We had captions for each one. And we put together a report. We sat down with the Southern Region Director and some of the senior inspectors, and we went over what we saw. And uh, because of our visit, they decided in the Southern Region to do what we call a specialized inspection. It's a regular inspection, but we weren't scheduled to inspect this operator this year, so that's why we call it a specialized inspection. And what we found was that the operator is doing a really good job operating and maintaining this pipeline. Uh, the inspector looked at all the cathodic protection records, they looked at rectifiers in the field, they took field readings, everything looked really good. Even though this rural area is class one, it's not a, a HCA area, the operator sent an inline inspection tool through the entire length of the pipe this year. And they also looked at all the above ground areas, all the areas where the pipe was exposed. And they came up with this very technical, very sophisticated system for uh, grading what they saw on the above ground structure. They had good, poor, and fair, or good, fair, and poor. And uh, the areas that they considered poor, and they did find one area that they ranked poor, they have scheduled uh, maintenance for next year where they're going to clean and coat that pipeline. But overall, it looked like the operator's doing a really good job operating and maintaining that pipeline. We didn't see any major concerns, and we expressed that back to the, uh, to the community, and I think they were very happy to hear that.